Hello and welcome to Let's Code Physics. In this series, we're going to examine the problem of a police car chasing a speeder. So the idea is that we have a car, and since I'm a physicist, my car drawings are extremely technical. Uh, this is how I was taught to draw cars by Mr. Bartlett in high school. So we're assuming we've got a speeder and uh, he is gonna be traveling, let's say, uh, faster than the speed limit, which alerts the nearby police officer. And uh, so we'll designate them S and P for speeder and police officer. We'll also give the police officer uh, some flashing lights. There we go, so that uh, the police officer is all official. And so the idea is that the uh, speeder is going to be traveling, let's initially say he's traveling at a constant speed. So we'll call that the velocity of the speeder. And we'll assume the officer's initial speed is going to be zero. And we're originally going to assume that he's got a constant acceleration to try to catch up with the speeder. Now this is one of my favorite problems because there's a lot of questions you can ask about this problem. So you can ask the question of how much time does it take for the police officer to catch up to the speeder. You can ask the question of how far it takes for the police officer to catch up to the speeder. So how long does it take and where are they when they catch each other or when the police officer catches the speeder. Um, and you can solve this problem analytically for, for this case with a constant speed for the speeder and a constant acceleration for the police officer. You can solve it exactly, but it's handy to, um, it's handy to study this using computational methods because, well, number one, it demonstrates a lot of neat things you can do with computational methods. You are, we're going to end up with this nice graph uh, that's going to show each of their positions versus time. And basically what we're looking for is where the speeder's graph intersects with the uh, police officer's graph. And so what you would look for would be this intersection point here. And all you'd have to do would be to read off the time for the catching and the distance for the catching. And it's real nice, it's a real nice visual. The other thing we'll be able to do is that we'll be able to change these conditions. So for example, maybe we can work it in so that the uh, speeder does not have a constant velocity. We might work it out where the police officer does not have a constant acceleration. We could try a bunch of different things. We might put in a delayed reaction time for the police officer, a delayed reaction time for the speeder. Uh, it's going to be really neat, but we're going to start out with it being nice and simple. And so in order to treat this computationally, we have to go back to the basic definition of acceleration. So the idea of acceleration is that it's the change in velocity over the change in time equals something's acceleration. So it's how quickly something's velocity is changing. Well, what we want to think about is we want to think of that delta V as being the, uh, being the next speed at the next point in time minus the current speed at the current point in time. I can write better than that. Uh, my mother is a kindergarten teacher and I sometimes hope she never watches these videos, divided by however uh, much forward, ho however much forward, however far forward you move in time. So the idea is you start up at one value, a delta t, you've got another value. At the next delta t, you've got another value. At the next delta t, you've got another value. So if the thing is accelerating, the velocity is going to be increasing each time. <clears throat> And so what we can do is, what this equation says is that if I want to know velocity at the next point in time, if I want to know the velocity a short time later, I can rearrange this equation to get velocity at the current time plus the acceleration times delta t. It's just a little algebra rearranging there. And what that means is if I know the speed here, I can, at point one, I can get the speed, the velocity at point two. Then once I know the velocity at point two, I get the velocity at point three, then I get the velocity at point four. So all I need is one initial value, and then I can get the rest of the values. That's why we call it an initial value problem. Sorry for the background noise. My cat just jumped from the... Uh, uh, from the window blinds. The same thing works out with the position. If I want to know the next value of the position, I just take the current value of the position plus the velocity times delta t. Now I've left a little space here because 
uh, there's a little ambiguity of which speed do you put in here. Do you put in the current speed? Do you put in the next speed? Do you put in an average of the two? Do you put in something else? It turns out this solution, this method is most stable when you use the next value of the velocity. It keeps the solution from running away as, as, I like, as we like to say in physics, it keeps the universe from blowing up. Um, so this is sort of an informal way of writing it. Again, you want to think of it as you're going from 1.1 1 .1 to 0.2, from 0.2 to 0.3. So the more formal way we write that we write this is that velocity at point i plus 1 is velocity at point i plus a delta t. And then the, vol uh, excuse me, the position at i plus 1 equals the position at i plus velocity. And since we're going with velocity next, that's going to be i plus 1 times delta t. And so in order to solve this problem, all we have to do is apply these two equations over and over again. We start with point 0.1, evaluate to get point 0.2, we put in point 0.2, evaluate to get point 0.3, etc. We continue on until the police officer catches the speeder. Now what we're going to have to do is to evaluate uh, these equations uh, for both the police officer and for the speeder. So we're going to have two th things to keep track of. And so what we're going to do next time is set it up in the code to where uh, we'll work with just the speeder at first, just so we can test out the method, make sure it's working all right, make sure we get it incorrectly. And then uh, once we have that verified, we'll move on to the police officer. So thanks for watching. See you next time.